Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're diving into a really fascinating story where two massive fields, technology and healthcare, are doing more than just working side by side. They're actually supercharging each other. And we're gonna look at how this is all playing out in Israel, creating innovations and lessons that honestly have a truly global reach. Now for this explainer, we're pulling from the amazing work done by the Israel Healthcare Highlights YouTube channel. It's a fantastic nonprofit initiative and their whole mission is to share insights from top Israeli experts with the rest of the world. So we're gonna distill the key ideas from seven of their most insightful interviews. So that really brings us to the big question, right? What actually happens when a nation that's famous for its tech startups, you know, a real high-tech powerhouse, turns that same energy towards a healthcare system that's also a world leader? Well, as you're about to see, the results are pretty incredible. Okay, here's the game plan. First, we'll look at the basic building blocks that make this whole ecosystem possible. Then we'll see how the major players put those pieces to work on a huge national scale. After that, we'll zoom right in on some specific mind-blowing examples of tech solving real world problems. And then at the end, we'll tie it all together. All right, let's kick things off with the why. You know, to really get a handle on the incredible innovations we're seeing, we first need to look at the unique soil they're growing in. What are the secret ingredients that make all of this possible in the first place? Well, Levi Shapiro, who founded Israel's biggest health tech community, really boils it down to three key things. First up, you've got amazing access to data thanks to a centralized health record system, and that's basically the fuel for any modern tech. Second, there's the ability to run pilot programs within that same system for next to nothing, which lets you test ideas super fast. And third, there's serious access to capital from both government grants and a really active venture capital scene to help those ideas grow. And this slide really drives home that first point about data. Dr. Shira Fisher from the Rand Corporation explains the huge difference. See, in the US, health data is often chopped up, it's designed for billing, and competitors don't share. But in Israel, the records are longitudinal, meaning they can follow a patient for decades. This gives you a complete picture of a person's health journey. It's an absolute goldmine for research and especially for training accurate AI. But it's not just about the raw materials, you know? It's also about the culture. Dr. Bruce Rosen makes a great point that a huge part of Israel's success is a culture of adaptation. It's not always about inventing something from scratch. It's about having the humility to see what other countries are doing well, and then having the boldness, the chutzpah, as they say, to take those ideas, adapt them, and make them even better for their own system. So we've got the foundation, the data, the funding, the culture. Now let's shift from the why to the how. How are these powerful elements actually being put into practice by some of the country's biggest healthcare institutions? Let's start with a number that'll really make you sit up. Six billion dollars. Just take a second, what could that possibly represent here? Well, according to Avner Halaparin of Sheba Impact, that $6 billion is the value of the startup ecosystem. We're talking over 120 companies that's been built around just one hospital's innovation platform. His whole point is that innovation isn't just some nice side project. It's a powerful economic engine that can turn a medical center into a hub for jobs and massive value creation. And then on an even bigger scale, you have Professor Ran Balliser from Clawlet Health Services, which covers more than half of Israel's population. He's pioneering what's called proactive predictive care. And the idea is, frankly, revolutionary. It's not about treating people when they're sick. It's about using AI to predict who is at high risk of getting sick in the future and then stepping in to stop it from ever happening. And here's what that actually looks like in the real world. A doctor logs in on a Monday morning and their screen literally tells them which patients to call in this week based on their future risk. The system can even suggest personalized interventions. And get this, it can analyze a CT scan that was done for, say, a kidney problem and spot hidden signs of osteoporosis at the same time. It is a fundamental shift from reactive to proactive care. Okay, so we've seen the foundation and we've seen the huge large-scale systems. Now let's zoom in even further and look at how this powerful tech is being used to solve very specific, very human challenges in medicine. This quote from Aaron Eshed, the CEO of Farability, just frames the mission perfectly. He's talking about IVF and fertility treatment, a field that for decades has been incredibly subjective and manual. His goal? To drag it into the modern, data-driven world. And his company is a perfect example of combining national strengths. 
See, Israel is a global IVF hub. It has the highest number of treatments per person in the world, which creates just massive amounts of data. Fertility takes that unique data advantage, combines it with Israel's AI expertise, and builds tools that help embryologists and doctors all over the world make better decisions. But what about the other side of medicine? You know, the stuff you can't really measure in a lab. The human side. Is it possible for technology to help with something as personal and complex as compassion? Well, it turns out the answer is yes. This is Professor Orit Carneli Miller. She saw that medical students almost never get enough practice in one of the hardest parts of their job, breaking bad news to patients and their families. So she helped develop an AI-powered simulator to fix that very problem. And the results are just amazing. The AI gives students a safe place where they can practice these tough conversations over and over again without any real-world consequences. It gives them instant, structured feedback on their performance, and students say it feels incredibly realistic. So the technology isn't replacing the human connection, it's actually making it stronger by building more confident and effective communicators. So we've walked through seven different stories from seven different experts. Now let's zoom back out one last time and pull together all the common threads. What are the big picture takeaways from this incredible health tech ecosystem? So what have we learned? Well, it really all starts with that foundational power of integrated long-term patient data. That data then becomes rocket fuel for AI, which acts as a universal accelerator for pretty much everything from daily clinical care to medical training. All of this happens inside a really collaborative national ecosystem, and it's driven by that unique cultural mix of adaptation and boldness. But the ultimate goal is crystal clear, to solve problems not just for one country, but for the entire world. And that really just leaves us with one final thought. When you think about it, from predictive care that stops disease before it starts, to AI that teaches empathy, these aren't just interesting Israeli stories. They're blueprints for the future of healthcare everywhere. The only real question is, which one of these innovations is going to transform our lives first?